um, we are going to start the um, new chapter. This chapter is about exponent laws and um, some radicals. And um, before we start, we are going to review a little bit of what we did in Math 8. And we did um, factor 3 in Math 8 to try to find the square root of a number. And we're going to extend that. Okay, I don't know, recall if you did a um, cube root, but we're going to do cube roots as well, okay? Okay, so um, recall a perfect square is simply a number multiplied by itself, and the result of that is a perfect square. For example, 4 times 4 makes it 16, and therefore 16 is a perfect square number because 4 times 4 is 16. In other words, the square root of 16, which is going backwards, is going to equal to 4, okay, because 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, so that's what square root is. Now, 784 is also a perfect square, which means we can find the square root of it, okay? What that means is 784, we're looking for two numbers multiplied by itself that will give you 784, and that is the square root of 784. Now, how do we do that? Okay, quickly recall, we can actually do it by factor 3. Okay, so let me uh, blow this up a little bit bigger so I have room because I, I write big. Okay, 784, we can divide this by 4. Okay, if you divide 784 by 4, you end up with 196. Now, 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. Now, 196, you can divide that by 4 again, and that is going to give us 49. Okay, 4 times 49 is 196. Now, actually, I'm going to circle the 2s just to indicate that that's the end of those branches because they are prime numbers, okay, prime factors. So, 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2, and 49 is the same thing as 7 times 7. Okay, so that means 784 can be rewritten as 2 to the power of 4, because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 2s multiplied together, so 2 to the power of 4 times 7 squared. Okay, so now how does this help us? Well, if we want to find the square root, remember that's the square root symbol, okay, so if you want to find the square root of 784, we can then rewrite this as 2 to the power of 4 times 7 squared. Okay, because 784 is just 2 to the power of 4 times 7 squared. Now, we can then um, split 2 to the power of 4 as 2 squared times 2 squared. Okay, because again, that means 2 2's multiply together, another set of 2 2's multiply together, and then 7 squared. Okay, and for the square roots, we, or for any roots actually, it turns out that we can actually split one single root into multiple roots when we are multiplying. Okay, so the square root of 2 squared times 2 squared times 7 squared can be split into the square root of 2 squared, the square root of 2 squared, and the square root of 7 squared. Now, why are we doing this? Well, because, recall, the square root and the square, they are simply just like opposite operations. They are basically like multiplication and division, right? The, the relationship between those two, they are just inverse of each other, okay? It's like you're taking one step forward, and then you take one step backward. You end up in the same spot, right? Which means you didn't do anything, right? You multiply by 5, and then divide it by 5, well, you didn't do anything, okay? So the square root of 2 squared is simply just going to be a 2, okay? That's going to give you that. The square root of 2 squared is, again, 2, and the square root of 7 squared is a 7, okay? So... Square root of 784 is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, times 7, and that is 28. Okay, so the square root of 784 is 28. Again, this means 28 times 28 is 784. Okay, so this is the factor tree method that we use in Math 8. Now, we can obviously use a different um, method. We can use a continuous division. It really is the same method, it's just how you... Uh, show your uh, solution is a little bit different, that's all, okay? So I'll show you. 784, now what you need to keep in mind though is for factor 3, notice how you don't have to use prime factors. For continuous division, you have to use prime factors. So I'm just gonna start with 2, because 2 is a prime number and 784 is an even number, right? It's an even number, so you know that you can divide it by 2. 784 divided by 2 is 392. Continue to divide it by 2, which means you cut it in half. That's 196 divided by 2. That's 2 times uh, 98 divided by 2. It gives you 49 and then 7 times 7. Notice how this piece 
you have one, two, three, four, four twos, right? So you can rewrite this 784 as two to the power four times again, two sevens, seven squared. Okay, so you get this, and that is exactly the same as what we have here. Okay, so then once you get to this step, you can then just copy this over here, right? It's the rest is the same thing. Okay, the rest is the same thing. Okay, so just copy over. Okay, or you don't have to, but you know what to do, hopefully. Okay, so this is a perfect square and 784, and we can write this as 28 times 28 if we wanted to, right? We don't have to, but the square root of 784 is 28. So that's how you determine the square root. Okay, now we are gonna move on to a perfect cube, okay? Perfect cube. What's a perfect cube? Well, if a perfect square is a number multiplied by itself twice, perfect cube, okay? I mean, think about this. Here is a perfect square, right? And a perfect cube is now three-dimensional. It's a cube. It's like Rubik's, Rubik's cube, okay? It's three-dimensional. So this is like two times two. If it's a cube, well then it's two times two times two, right? It's length times width times height. So this is a list of perfect cubes because zero is zero cube, right? Zero times zero times zero. One is a perfect cube because one times one times one is a one. Eight is a perfect cube because two times two times two. 27 is three cube and so on. Here, I show you all the way up to 10 cube, okay? Because 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10. Okay, so that's the list of perfect cubes. You know, a short list, of course. You can go on forever. But for now, we're going to stop right there. Now, we're going to look at these four examples and figure out which one, well, which ones are perfect cubes, okay? Eight is a perfect cube because, well, it's right here, right? So this is a perfect cube. Four out of nine is not a perfect cube. However, four out of nine is a perfect square, okay? This is not a perfect cube, this is actually a perfect square. Now, how do I know this is a perfect square? Well, because both four and nine are perfect squares, which makes this fraction a perfect square, okay? Because square root of four is a two, and the square root of nine is a three. So four out of nine is a perfect square. 25 is not a perfect cube, it's a perfect square as well, right? Five times five is 25. So, based on the reasoning for part B, we know that D is also a perfect cube because you can see the number 64 is on the list. You can see the number 27 is also on the list. This is actually 4 times 4 times 4 divided by 3 times 3 times 3. So, you can rewrite this as 4 over 3 cubed. Okay, so 4, 64 over 27 is a perfect cube. Okay? For a fraction to be a perfect square or a perfect cube, both numerator and denominator will have to be both perfect squares and perfect cubes, okay? Okay, so that's what perfect cubes are. Now, of course, we're gonna look at the cube root, okay? So 1728 is a perfect cube, okay? Which means 1728 is gonna be a number multiplied by itself exactly three times. Now. What we try to do with the cube root is we want to figure out what this number is, okay? That's what a cube root does, okay? It figures out what number that is you need to multiply itself three times to get to, you know, in this case, 1728. Okay, we're going to do it by factor three. Again, I'm going to blow this up. Okay, 1728. I'm going to divide this by, does it work by four? Yeah, four works. And, you know, if you're not sure, you know what? I'll do it by two, okay? Divided by two, this is gonna be 864. Uh, eight, yes, so two is a prime, so I'm gonna circle that. Divided by two, that's 432. Divided by two, 216. Divided by two, 108. Divided by two, 54. Divided by two, 27. Now we cannot divide it by two anymore. We can divide it by three, which we get nine and three. And nine is three times three. Okay, so that means 1728 can be rewritten as, well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six twos, so two to the power of six, times one, two, three, three threes, so three cubed. So the, the way to uh, show that it's a cube root is that you write a, a root sign with a little three there, 
the three indicates that it's a cube root. Okay, that's what we call the index. If it's a square root, you know, we don't write a two there, but you know, if it's not written, we assume it's a square root, which means we can actually have a fourth root and fifth root and so on, okay? You just need to write a four or a five or a six and so on. Okay, so cube root of 1728 can be rewritten as the cube root of two to the power six times three cubed. Now, very much like what we did for the square root, we are gonna split two to the power of six. Now, the question is how are we gonna split it? Well, for the square root, let's go back up. For the square root, we split the two to the power of four into two squared and two squared because we are taking the square root of a square. When you take the square root of a square, they just cancel each other out, okay? So guess what? When we are trying to find a cube root, we are gonna split two to the power of six into perfect cubes, okay? So that's gonna be two cubed times two cubed times three cubed. Because in that case, we can then split this one perfect cube or cubes, cube root into three cube roots, okay? like that. Okay, I split one, two, three, right, into three parts. One, two, three. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is because the cube root and the cube will just cancel each other out, okay? Again, I'm taking one step forward and then I'm taking one step backward. Well, that means I didn't do anything. Therefore, this is gonna be a two, this is gonna be a two, and this is gonna be a three. And I'm gonna multiply these three numbers together. Two times two times three is 12. So the cube root of 1728 is going to equal to 12. Okay. Um, and of course, you can also do it by continuous division. Okay. Um, and really, it really is the same thing. It's just the way you show it is different. That's all. Okay. So I'm going to show you. You can divide it by two. Basically, you get exactly what we have here. You get a 64 divided by two, 432 divided by two, 216, divided by two, 108, divided by two, 54, divided by two, 27, divided by three, it's a nine, divided by three, it's a three. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. So two to the six times one, two, three, three cubed. And the rest is exactly the same as how I show you right here. Okay, uh, you have some practice questions to do for your homework. Um, but for now, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Okay, little trick. Okay, so what about these ones? Like we have 100, we have 25 million, we have 0 0.0000009 and so on. So the, the uh, common thing here is that we have a bunch of zeros. Okay, so what are we gonna do? How, how is there an easier way to do this? Because I mean, if we're gonna do prime factorization for that, that's gonna take a while. Okay, it turns out there's a little trick, a little shortcut. Okay, I'm gonna show you this, okay? Root 100, I think that one is clear. That is just 10, right? Because 10 times 10 is 100. Okay, I'm also gonna uh, show you this. The square root of 10,000 is actually 100, okay? And then the square root of 1 million, so that's six zeros, is actually 1,000. Okay, now let's look for patterns here, okay? This is a one, square root of one is just one. Now, there are two zeros here, but my final result after I take the square root only has one zero, okay? This again is a square root of one, so I end up with a one here. There is, or there are four zeros here, but my end result has two zeros. Hmm, two zeros, one zero, four zeros, two zeros, huh. I guess I'm just taking half the amount, right? Let's check. That's one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Indeed, half of six is three. We do have one, two, three zeros in our result, right? In our uh, answer. So when you take the square root of a bunch of zeros, okay, followed by you know the perfect square number here, the end result is just gonna be half the amount of zeros. So for this example, this is a square root of, if you just look at them separately, square root of 25, well, square root of 25 is just a five, okay? And now all we have to do is count the number of zeros. We have one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Therefore, the result, the answer would have, instead of six zeros, we would have 
half the amount, which is three of them. So the answer is 5,000. Okay, so that's a little shortcut that we can do. Okay, now what about a decimal, right? So it turns out that it's exactly the same thing, okay? Except we don't count the number of zeros, we count the number of decimal places. Okay, I do notice that that's a nine, so the square root of nine is a three, so I'm gonna write down a three right here. And now from here, I'm gonna count the number of decimal places. That's one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places. So you guessed it. We are gonna take half the amount, which is gonna be three decimal places. So the answer is gonna be 0 0.003, okay? That's kind of interesting, hey? Okay, now, how does this apply to the cube root? Well, for square roots, we're taking half the amount of zeros. For the cube root, we are taking a third, okay, a third. You can see the cube root of 1,000, we know the answer is 10, right? Because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. You can see there are three zeros here. The end result, only one, okay? So three, taking a third of that means you just divide it by three, and that gives you a one, so you can see you have one zero. So same thing with the decimals, right? You just count the number of decimal places, and then you're gonna divide it by three. That will be the number of decimal places you have in your final answer. Now you'll see that you end up, this number ends up with a 27. So we need to take the cube root of 27. The cube root of 27 is gonna be a three because three times three times three is 27. Okay, so three times three times three is 27. So cube root of 27 is three. Now let's count the number of decimal places. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine decimal places. Nine divided by three is three, which means our answer should have three decimal places. Because it's a cube root, that's always divided by three. These are square roots, so we just divide it by two, right? Because six divided by two, three zeros. Six decimal places divided by two, three decimal places. Okay, these are square roots, these are cube roots, so we divide it by three instead. Um, so three decimal places, again, the answer will be 0 0.003. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the last bit because that's kind of an interesting shortcut. Neat, it's kind of neat. Um, and uh, you can do some practice with your, you know, finding the square root and cube root. And uh, let me know if you need some help, okay? Good luck.